Hi, my name is Sean McManus from Telecom TV. I'm at the Open Networking and Edge Summit, and I'm joined now by Indopreet Kaur and Chris Sarantopoulos, both from Omdia, and they're going to tell us about some of their latest research. So um, Indopreet, tell us first of all, um, telcos are increasingly on a journey to virtualize and containerize their network infrastructure. What's driving that? So before we you know, get into the drivers, I would really like to highlight what this cloud native is, because we've heard about this term a couple of times, you know, and there are three benefits we are looking at when we talk about cloud native. It has to be flexibility, scalability, and resilience. So when I say flexibility, you know, in an old world of telcos, even with the virtual environment, you build the system for a set capacity, you know, but that's not the case with cloud native. I'm a telco, I see a sudden surge in traffic and I want to have capacity on demand. This is what Cloud Native allows me to do. I'm a telco, I'm serving a dynamic slicing use case, and I want to have a slice, or I want to have an um, instance of the network function at the edge or the far edge of the network. Cloud Native gives me that option. I want to do it on-prem, on or I want to do it on a public cloud infrastructure. Again, that's the choice that Cloud Native brings me. Scalability. It is really about, you know, how dynamically you are managing those cloud resources. Again, if we look at Kubernetes, it has done that for, you know, the enterprise environments. Uh, you can scale in, scale out the capacity on the go, on the fly. Um, it is a declarative mechanism um, and you add the GitOps related um, frameworks to it adds the additional automation capabilities um, to uh, your resource management. Then you talk about resilience. Again, it's about how you recover your entire network state or you know the network service in case of a failover or a failure. Again, Kubernetes has done that in enterprise environments. You can um, auto heal or auto scale your clusters you know, in case of a fail, net, uh, cluster failover. So these are the benefits I think cloud native has to bring in for telcos when they talk about CNFs. We do this research every year and it's an end user perception survey where we, wherein we ask, go and ask the telcos, where are you on this adoption journey? So um, every year, you know, we get the results and we tend to compare the results we get this year with the previous year. So the latest results that we have, telcos indicated that about on average, 20% of their workloads are in cloud native environments. Now look at the previous year's surveys, it was about 16%. So uh, it's not a massive jump, but there is some progress. But at the same time, if I look at where are the networks in terms of virtualized or virtual machine kind of environments? A good 35 to 40% of the network functions still sit in that environment. And I, what the survey indicates is that that is likely going to be, you know, uh, forward as you go forward uh, five years as well. So maybe about 30% odd network functions will still sit in the virtualized environments. That's, I guess, where we are reading the, the industry or the journey so far. What do you think the reasons are for telcos sticking with virtual machines to that extent? I think there are multiple reasons. I can call out three of them. First is telcos have been in, operating in this environment for a very long time. So definitely they are more familiar with, you know, the skills that are required, uh, the frameworks that are being used. The second is in certain environments, VMs can bring in better security compared to containers. And the third thing is more related to, you know, you've invested in the networks, you've been investing in virtualized environments for past five to eight years. Um, you really need to sweat that infrastructure before you can go out and scale the cloud native environment. So I think that's the journey um, where it is progressing with virtual machines and uh, cloud native environments. But again, to call out, when I look at um, how do or what proportion of cloud native network functions telcos will have um, by 2020, 2030, I think it's 33% or 35%. That is about um, the result that we saw in the recent surveys. 
and I compare it with our previous surveys, I did not see a lot of variation in that percentage. So it kind of indicates that not everything can be containerized and neither is the case that not, you know, everything can move away from the physical world into a virtualized or containerized environment. So there will always be this balance and telcos will maintain this mixed kind of environment where you have certain functions in physical, certain in virtual and certain in the cloud native environment. It was interesting to see that telcos are increasingly using the same cloud infrastructure for their IT and their network functions. Um, tell us what's motivating that. So, I, well, when we read about, you know, uh, different telcos adopting or moving towards a horizontal cloud infrastructure, uh, there are different telcos taking different approaches. I would say this horizontal cloud infrastructure is um, what we relate mostly with tier one operators who have multi-country footprint and um, would want to have a similar kind of cloud, a consistent cloud environment across different countries, across their footprints. So that's one. Um, but to really have a common cloud infrastructure, it's about how well you're managing your resources. So traditionally, telcos have maintained separate environments, a different cloud for using or hosting your IT functions, OSS, BSS, and a different environment for hosting your network related workloads. Now, there's a lot of phase stage of resources when you're maintaining separate environments. So um, if you have a horizontal environment, it definitely helps you utilize those resources better. Thank you. Chris, tell us how advanced automation is in CSP networks today. Well, to define this, first we have to come up with a common metric across the whole industry that uh, defines the, the status of automation and the level of automation. In an industry as a whole level, I'd say that the team forums uh, autonomous network levels model is uh, establishing itself as the de facto uh, measurement for the status of automation. In reality and in internal level, we see CSPs uh, working their own ways. So we see that most of them, the 45% uh, according to our research, are using their own metrics to define the status and the, and the level of their automation, their networks, and uh, uh, around one third resorting to the TM forum uh, autonomous network levels. The rest will don't have a metric at all that was surprising uh, at this point. To answer your question, uh, I think based on the TM forum's autonomous network level model, uh, we see that uh, ha more than half of the CSPs are in level two or level three. So this is where uh, AI is starting to getting a more a consulting role, so it's making suggestions to operators, but still the decision is uh, made by humans and human operators. We see also that the uh, IP and MPLS are the most automated network domains, and this kind of makes sense. These are where the technology is not uh, uh, telco exclusive, so it is used in enterprise networks, and more importantly, it is used in data centers that lead the innovation in, uh, in the automation, at least. And uh, I would say that though, however, regardless of the domain, uh, operators should look to uh, find out what are the most high value use cases that they need to automate, uh, find these high value scenarios that are a combination of the business value and the operational feasibility. So how easy it is to use the technology to do it. Uh, things like service assurance and fault management are low hanging apples in this uh, context, there are more advanced uh, technology available to automate these domains and also they provide very quick wins uh, because they immediately impact the customer experience. On the other hand, things like uh, network uh, planning or network uh, rollout are use cases that are heavily manual. They don't care uh, that often it's not uh, an everyday activity and it also it's not a, a huge burden to uh, CSP OPEX, so it makes sense that they are not uh, that high priorities. Tell us, what are the biggest challenges that CSPs face with regard to network automation? Mm -hmm. our, our research shows that by far the two biggest challenges is uh, integration and interoperability of network systems and then uh, employee skill set gap. 
The first one is that uh, because telcos have a, a huge legacy burden, they rely a lot on legacy systems to run their networks. These systems are not uh, designed for modern automation. They are not API based and uh, it's difficult to use them or to integrate them to automation solutions. Also, there are many industry standards that try to define the framework for automation within telco networks, but uh, in many cases, they are very open to interpretation. So many vendors choose the, or create their own implementations. And this uh, leaves a gap for CSPs uh, where they either have to come up with some uh, and develop some custom customized solutions to accommodate that or uh, resort to some uh, middleware to ensure interoperability across the board. The second one is the employee skill set gap. Telcos excel in traditional network engineering uh, skills, but uh, they have a gap uh, on a shortage of uh, available talent in terms of uh, skills that are more software driven uh, are uh, better used for modern technologies. So for example, to uh, implement infrastructure as code, engineers are, need to be able to script a bit and uh, use uh, tools like uh, Ansible, Terraform and, and this type of tools. For, uh, to, to successfully manage the 5G core, uh, operators need to work with Kubernetes. So being able to uh, manage uh, network resources using Helm charts. This is, this is uh, with things that uh, where they need to find the right mixture of skills and create the teams that are also not siloed, but bring together network engineers with traditional skills and knowledge of the domains with more um, software driven uh, skills that uh, can manage these new technologies. I was interested to see that about a quarter of your respondents said that budget and a lack of certainty about the return on investment were a key challenge for them. Where do you expect the return on investment to come from? So telcos basically have uh, two levers to pull, right? Uh, so they can either reduce the costs or they can either maximize the revenue. This is obviously the, the benefits. The, this uh, automation always uh, touches everything across the board. So at the beginning, uh, the operational benefits and the reduction of operational costs is the, the scenario that uh, can create, uh, have a more a direct impact. Uh, revenues, new revenues uh, will need uh, other elements like dynamic services. This is something that is coming in the recent years, things like uh, uh, new enterprise services or uh, cloud services. These are the types of scenarios uh, that uh, will create generate a new revenue for uh, telcos to justify this automation spending. Now, in reality, when it comes to uh, decisions over budget, uh, we see that uh, crea creating new revenue takes a precedence and uh, you know the decision makers will always have their, in the bottom uh, priority the facts that, uh, that create uh, operational uh, efficiencies. But uh, in reality, th these are the two, the two cases and we see it a lot whenever an operator sets up a task force for autonomous networks, the first thing they want, the first task they say is find me or uh, quantify the benefits. For me. And this is the diff most difficult part to do, right? Absolutely. What would you say was the most surprising thing you found in the research, Chris? So I, I would say that uh, there is still a huge gap in terms of the tooling that is used to automate uh, networks. Uh, and the approaches that the uh, operators take. So many operators uh, resort uh, to, there, there are many approaches, obviously. Uh, many operators uh, tend to rely at the moment to their network equipment, equipment vendors. So they, they don't feel comfortable using a custom-made solution or developing their own solutions there or uh, or going to a vendor that comes from a different background. I think this is a, a bit of a, not a surprise as per se, but I think it shows a, a trend in telcos. Thank you. Indipreet, what was the most surprising thing to you? I think uh, we called out that uh, 
horizontal cloud adoption. And um, when we did the surveys this year, we asked this question to the CSPs, have you adopted the horizontal cloud for IT and uh, the network functions? Um, huge proportion, 19% said they don't have, so 80% said they already have or they are working on implementing a horizontal cloud strategy. So I think I would like to call that out. Now this horizontalization could happen at different layers. So it could either happen at the infrastructure layer or the Kubernetes CAS layer, or at you know the upper level where you have the management tools. So most of the telcos are still at you know the lower layers where you have either the CAS or the infrastructure which is a common platform for your IT and network functions. But a good person, percentage, I think 32% of those respondents said they also have a common platform for managing those resources. So it could be a cluster for your network function or a cluster for your IT uh, applications. They can have common tools to do that. Um, so that was surprising in our research. Indapreet and Chris, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.